Oh, my Lord. I don't love their enemy. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. I'm going to lift up my voice in this place. I'm going to give him the praise and the glory. Oh, hallelujah. He's been too good to me. Hallelujah. Now, I need everybody. No more hallelujah gimmicks. But if you love the Lord, I need you to give God the highest praise in this place. Oh, come on, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Hallelujah. Show the enemy how much you love him. Show the enemy how much you adore God. I love you so much, I will not stay silent. I will not stay quiet. Hallelujah. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me. Hallelujah. Oh, shut up. He's been too good to me. Too good. Give an honor to the Lord who's the head of my life. To the pastor of this great house in the presence of Bishop Vaughn D. McCray Sr. Let's give God praise for our pastor. Hallelujah. And next month, hallelujah, we will see him consecrated at the Holy Convocation. For those that are not going, you can watch it on the Cool JC page on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. God is going to do something great. And we don't slight the first lady, the outstanding first lady in her absence, the lady Anna P. McCray. Let's give God praise for her. Ass. Hallelujah. And let's give God praise for our mistress of ceremony. And I'm partial to her because she is my lovely wife. Let's give God praise. For her. And whoo, I love that word that she said on this morning. The objects are closer than they appear. Your blessing is closer than what you think it is. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank God for her. And we don't want to labor before you long. And also, everyone who is in our cyber sanctuary on this morning watching us on Facebook Live, we appreciate you, your dedication, and your service. We ask you to like, comment, share this message on this morning that it may be a blessing to someone that needs to hear a word. And if you are ever in the West Philadelphia area, our address is 5143 Ray Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Our services start at 11 a.m. Sharp, we want you to come and worship the Lord with us. Hallelujah. Yes, that was advertisement for our church. Amen. We ask you to turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. When I was getting my stuff all week long, the Lord was dealing with me with one topic. And then when I sat down to my computer yesterday to study, to write it up, my notes, the Lord said, no, I want you to preach this. And I said, okay, Lord, you got to take me through this. You got to take me through this, God, but I know he's able to do it seemingly and abundantly above all that we can ask the thing. We ask you also, uh, I'll say that afterwards. We ask you to begin at verse 1. I'm going to read down to the 14th verse. You don't have to stand because it's a lot of reading today. If you want to stand, we appreciate you. Uh, the king of Syria had great, I'm reading from the New Living Translation version had great admiration for Naaman, the king, commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given uh, Syria great victories. But through, Cain, through Naaman, was a, but though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. At the time of the Syrian raiders had invaded the land of Israel, among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel has said. Go visit the prophet. The king of Syria told him, I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out carrying a gift of 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter to the king of Israel said, with this, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. 
When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, am I God that I can give life and take it take away? Why is this man asking me to heal someone with leprosy? I can see that he is trying to pick a fight with me. But Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had tore his clothes in dismay. He sent his message to him. Why are you upset? So upset. Send name it to me and I will learn that there is and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So Naaman went to the horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent out the messenger out, sent the messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't you, aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the Farpar better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't, why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage, but his officers tried to reason with him and said, sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he simply, he says simply, go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was healed. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Gracious God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and we magnify your name. Lord, let this word be not all of thee and none of thee. Don't let this word be some of thee and some of thee. But Lord, let this word be all of thee and none of me. God, the enemy is busy, but you are the devil's boss. Make him behave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. We ask you, oh God, right now to take hold of this message, God. Talk the way you want to talk. Preach the way you want to preach. Do the miraculous works like you want to do the miraculous works, oh God. We surrender it all to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, have your way in this place. Change somebody's life for the better, oh God. That they shall have a testimony that God did it for me. Lord, I believe that you can do it seemingly and abundantly, oh God. The enemy wants to vex your people. Rebuke him now in the name of Jesus Christ. He has no power in this place. He has no authority, oh God, unless you give him authority. You are, hallelujah, the great eternal wonder. There's somebody in here that needs a breakthrough, God. Somebody in here needs to be saved. Somebody in here needs to be healed, oh God, from the mental anguish, oh Jesus Christ. The mind, oh God, is a fragile thing, oh Lord. And the enemy wants to destroy our minds. But you have all power, oh God, in your hands. We ask you, oh God, to do a work right now. Anoint your people, oh God. Rest on their soul, oh God. Take off the burdens in their lives, oh God. Give them joy and happiness and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, have your way in this place, oh God. And we will forever praise you and we will forever magnify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child. And he was healed. To use for a topic on this morning, trust the process. Trust the process. You know, in about almost 10 years ago now, the Philadelphia 76ers was in a place where they were losing a lot of games. They weren't being productive and weren't making it to the playoffs. Then they hired a GM, last name was Hinky. And he says, you know, we're going to make some changes 
but I need everybody in this place to trust the process. Trusting the process is not an easy thing. When we think about trust, a lot can be said about the word. Webster's defines trust as assured reliance of the character, ability, strength, truth, or something, or someone, or something. One in which confidence is placed. The process can be highly detailed from going through medical school or just everyday life. Life is a process, period. No matter what you go through, you must get through each phase of the process to step out on the other side. The process is necessary for growth and overall development. We tend to rush the process. We demand results so quickly and realize it's during the process that we are sharpened and refined. We have to look at it like the process is progress. Each aspect of the process is essential for personal growth and development. Ultimately, the process transforms us into whom we need to be, which is how we measure it as progress. We all can agree this morning that it's never easy to trust somebody or someone. For some of us, trust is earned through time and even by works. In order to have someone to achieve trust from another person, you may have to put some work in it. And a while uh, going through it, you'll have to trust the process. Trusting the process can be difficult at times and even discouraging. We live in the society where we want things how we want them. And wanting and waiting for resort results is hard for us at times. Trusting the process is necessary for our growth and development once again. Sometimes God is not going to move when you say move. <laughs> But when he, he will see how you respond in the waiting period, will you just fold over or say you're going to give up or will you wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine hearts? There are times when God puts things in our hearts. He puts dreams. He puts aspirations. He puts goals and he gives them right to us right away sometimes. But there are other times when the Lord will sit there and say, you have to wait a while. Because there is something that I'm trying to do in your life. We can wonder, wonder what God is doing. We can ask. We can start to ask, do I really hear from God? Or perhaps the biggest question we can ask is, God, what is taking so long? God, why is this process not moving along quicker? God, why don't I have an answer yet? God, shouldn't you have already granted my request? These are things that in our human nature, we ask God every time. I don't know about you, but I'm not in the spirit 24 seven. The humanity sometimes takes over and I look at things like the way I shouldn't be looking at it, but I should look at it in the spiritual realm. Amen. We can allow our egos to get the best of us regarding God. We have to approach God correctly humbly so he knows that we are serious and we understand we need to go through the process if you haven't picked up this morning you're going to hear the word going through the process a lot hallelujah and we should ask god what i need to do differently to ensure you are granting my request there has to be a certain level of transparency in your walk with god I can tell you about this. Even though Vaughn may think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, the Lord knows you ain't the greatest thing since sliced bread. You need to be transparent and have a look at yourself internally. Hallelujah. I'm starting to understand that during those times of waiting, God is preparing us for his promise. During our waiting, he teaches us things. He grows our character, our faith, and our ability to do what we feel we are called to do. God takes us through the process, hallelujah. The question is, will you trust the process? The Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high like wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint because they have trusted the process. 
I know you have been waiting a long time and you're wondering why things are not moving quick enough. During this part of the process, we need to take a self-diagnostic of our soul, of ourselves. And we need to look at what is hindering us because God is not moving quick enough for us. Looking at yourself, hallelujah, in the mirror and saying, where do I need to be differently? And I love our bishop. Sometimes he used the example where he says, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Sometimes you got to say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Show me my flaws. Hallelujah. You got to show your flaws sometimes. Oh, it's not me. Hallelujah. I'm good. You are good. But there is something inside of me that is hindering me from making that connection with God. And in order to get that connection better with God, I have to get to a place that I say, there is something in me that is not right with God. I need to change it. Hallelujah. I need to do it better. I realize that self-reflection partnered with transparency is a good thing. It allows us to see ourselves the way God sees us. It allows us to become vulnerable to accept the change and God's will for our lives. For as the people of God, I'm not, hallelujah, I'm included in this at all times. We can be the biggest hindrances in receiving the blessings of the Lord. We can be the biggest hindrances a lot of times, hallelujah. Because the lack of faith that we're not displaying like we should. I'm included in that too, hallelujah. The hindrance will call a blockade in our faith. So now we are starting to walk by sight, hallelujah. Faith is the foundation of all believers. We are called to see by faith and not by what we actually see. Faith allows us to see beyond and keep our eyes on the horizon. Faith will enable us to think in higher thoughts and not of lower thoughts. Faith is the factor is what we need to build trust and help you go through, grow through the process, excuse me. Faith gives us confidence and a hope that everything will turn out good. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians, Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Colossians 3 and 2 says, Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. Faith taps into God's power and our potential to live our fullest capacity. When we read the word, we must believe what we read, which is faith. Hallelujah. We pray when we pray to God, we must believe what we say, which is faith. Hallelujah. When we believe what we read in God's word, hallelujah, and believe what say, what we say will happen, then mountains will move and the earth will shake. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Hallelujah. Seek his will in all that you do and he will show you which path to take. Hallelujah. Then you will see the progress take place because of the buildup of trust in the process because you trust God, trust in God. When you love God with all your heart, you can trust God with all your heart. Hallelujah. We need to ensure that we are ready to receive the miracles of God. And to receive those miracles, we have to follow the instructions. And trust is the process in following those instructions. I know that some of the instructions may be unorthodox. And hallelujah, they don't seem right in our eyes. They don't seem to make sense, but that's where faith comes in. Hallelujah. We have to have the confidence to say, Lord, this looks a little strange to me, but I will trust you that you will always take care of me. Turning over total control to God is a process. I know something about me, myself, and I'm talking about me now. Sometimes I don't want somebody to have control over what I'm doing. But I have to trust in God that God knows the way that I take. He knows the path that he has put me on. And because he knows and he loves me and cares about me, I got to trust him through the process. 
So having faith and trusting the process prepares you to receive your miracle. And that's what God wants for his people. Now, don't forget that there will be some negative influences to deter you from being blessed. They will try to use your past experiences against you. And they will get you to a point where you are depressed and hopeless. The enemy will use his influence on those people. Hallelujah. But you got to separate yourself from those people. Hallelujah. You got to get yourself some good accountability partners. And preacher, what do you mean accountability partners? I mean people that will tell you good, but they'll also tell you when you're bad. Hallelujah. I don't need people around me to tell me that I'm good all the time. That's not helping me. That's not helping me grow. That's not helping me get to the next level in God. But I need people to look at me and say, you were wrong here. You need to change. Hallelujah. I got a reality check last week. Hallelujah. And it was good for my soul. Amen. The devil, the devil, excuse me, doesn't want to see you blessed and doesn't want to see you highly favored. He is disgusted by the people of God because we are blessed and we are not cursed. In every attack, he tries to disable us, but God always gives us the victory. This may be a difficult time in your life, and we need to find a way to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord dropped these things in my spirit last night. He says, seek the truth in the scripture. Hallelujah. You need to know the scripture ain't changing. And if you want some truth, you need to see the scripture. Glory be the name of the Lord. And the hallelujah number two says, confess your unbelief. Hallelujah be to God. And Mark, hallelujah, the chapter 20 and chapter 9, verse 24, the father cried out and he said, I do believe, but I help me to overcome my unbelief. Hallelujah. You need to confess unto the Lord your unbelief because God is not going to put you on display. He's going to help you and say, I'll give you strength to overcome. Hallelujah. I'll give you strength. If you have trouble believing, I'll show you who I really am. All you got to do is trust me. Hallelujah. Number three, it says share your concerns with your accountability partners. When you are struggling, hallelujah, you need somebody other than your pastor to pray for you because he's always praying for you. And you need to have some some people who are spiritual. I don't need no people that ain't spiritual. I need somebody that's going to tell me where I am wrong and how I need to get better. Glory be the name of the Lord. Number four says, remember God and spend time with him. God who is a jealous God and he requires his people to spend time time with him. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of Adam. The Bible said that the Lord would come down in the cool of the day in the garden and he will spend time with Adam. But we have to return the favor. How many of us are praying like we should? How many of us are fasting like we should? How many of us are meditating on the word of the Lord. Why did you say that, preacher? But I said that because you need, hallelujah, that's how you build your relationship with God. If you ain't praying, but the first thing come out of your mouth when somebody calls you, you're about to cuss them out. That ain't a good relationship with the Lord. Glory be the name of the Lord. And number five says, well, in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Spirit comforts and reminds you of the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit will also lead you into all obedience. I know this is hard, but the preacher preaches to himself first. And the last
fasting, the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. He said, wait, I say on the Lord. And I hear Psalms 34. The Lord hears his people. And when they call for help, he will rescue them out of their trouble. Glory be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah be to God. Now the scripture I read to you concerning the man naming who was a commander in the Syrian army. He was an upright man according to the king of Assyria. But one thing that Laman had to go through, he was stricken with leprosy. Leprosy is a skin disease and it's only transferred by skin to skin contact. And anybody who was a leper in Israel, they had to live outside of the city but because he was a Syrian he was still a commander hallelujah but you can have leprosy I was reading and researching it you can have it for 20 years and not have no symptoms but Naaman had symptoms and one day he wasn't even thinking about being healed they raided the land of Israel Glory be the name of the Lord. And they took a little girl. And the girl became a maid to name his wife. Glory be the name of the Lord. And when they, hallelujah, the little girl. Even though you are in a distressful situation. Even though you are not in familiar territory. The little girl said to Naaman. Won't you go down and see the prophet in Samaria she spoke faith into Naaman and she said he would heal you of this disease glory be the name of the Lord now Naaman told the king of Assyria that they said they got this prophet down in Israel will you write me a letter of introduction that I will give to the king so I I'll be healed. That was Laban's name his first mistake. He said, let me write a letter to the king of Israel. What he should have did was write a letter to the prophet. Glory be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says he has 750 pounds of silver, which translates to $60,000. He had 100 pounds of gold. At that time, will translate to 20 pounds of gold, 20,000 dollars. Huh? Glory be the name of Lord. And he has some clothing that he took down to the hallelujah with him. Because Naaman didn't understand and he didn't fully trust the process yet. He thought he could buy his healing. But I don't know about you. If I want the Lord to heal me, I need to believe it in my heart and believe it in my soul. Hallelujah. If you have a little mustard seed of faith, you can move mountains. Glory be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah be to God. Now, Naaman goes and sees the king. He goes and sees King Jehoram. Now, King Jehoram is mad because he is an idolatry worshiper. He doesn't worship the true and living God. So, hallelujah, the king. Now, watch this. The king doesn't say go get Elisha the king says what am I supposed to do about this Yeah, like I got the power to heal you because the king didn't trust in the true living God so Elisha heard what was going on and he sent a message to the king he said king why are you upset hallelujah be to God tell Naaman to come down to my house 
if he comes down to my house, the Lord will heal him. Now Naaman is going down to the prophet's house. Now Naaman doesn't, he's not humble at the time. I don't know about you, but if it was me and I wanted to get my blessing, I'd be crawling on the ground. I'd be laying prostrate. But the Bible says that Naaman, hallelujah, he walked up to the door. So Elijah saw that. So he told his servant, he said, give him this message. Hallelujah be to God. He said, tell him to go down to the Jordan River. And I want you to dip your body in the Jordan River seven times. Now Naaman is mad. First you disrespect me by not coming out to talk to me. But hallelujah, Elijah knew the law. He knew that if he made contact with Naaman, he will have to leave the city. Glory be the name of the Lord. Now Naaman is mad. But there is always some people around you. That's why I said you got to let your community of believers, your accountability partners, talk some sense into you. Glory be the name of the Lord. Now the soldiers say, wait a minute, Naaman. You don't want to miss the move of God. You don't want to miss the blessings of God. You, the prophet told you, he said, go down to the Jordan River. I know it's dirty in the Jordan. I know it's bacteria in the Jordan. But I trust in the Lord. Hallelujah be to God. So Naaman, hallelujah, he got to a place that he went in the Jordan River and he dipped himself one time. Nothing happened. He dipped himself two, three, four, five times. And nothing happened. He dipped himself six times. And still nothing happened. But oh, the seventh time is the number of completion. Glory be the name of the Lord. When he dipped himself seven times, the bacteria of the leprosy started to come off of the hills. Glory be the name of the Lord. And the Bible doesn't say he was turned back to his original skin. But the Lord gave him new vitality of skin. Glory be the name of the Lord. And I know somebody here is struggling with trusting the process. Sometimes you gotta go through hell. You gotta go through the muddy waters. Sometimes you gotta go in. Let's have church. Sometimes you gotta go through the process. Because when I go through the process, I know I become out like poor gold. Glory be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, God. And I ask the Lord. Why did you want to go down to the Jordan River? The Jordan was dirty. The Jordan was nasty. The Jordan was ugh, nasty. But that's where your healing is. You got to go through hell. You got to go through the sludge. You got to go through the fires. Because I know when I go through the fires, God will look out for me if it was good for Jesus then it's good for me fast forward a couple of years Jesus saw John he said John baptize me in the Jordan River I do is dirty I go I have to go I climb through the garbage cause I trust in the process I will go where you want me to go. I do what you want me to do. I say what you want me to say because I trust you God. Hallelujah. I mean I know what you're doing but I blind trust you. My faith will trust 
trust you. I know my healing is at the next level. I know my resolve will give my breakthroughs. I'm going to trust. I'm trusting God. Oh, Shataya Massa. Hey, he can a massa. Hey, God. Go ahead, praise him if you trust the process. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, have your way. Oh, Lord, I praise you. God, I praise you. Oh, Go ahead, praise him. If you trust the process, you trust him, he'll do it for you. If you trust him, he'll break away for you. Oh God, I pray. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I trust him. Hallelujah. He'll take me through the process. I can't see the outcome. Hallelujah. But my faith sees that he's going to do it for me. My faith sees that he's going to work it out. My faith sees that he's going to open up door. My faith sees he's going to save my husband. He's going to save my child. He's going to save my family. My faith sees it because I trust in the process. I trust him. Oh God, oh God. Oh hallelujah. Some of y'all here been waiting for God to move and do something miraculous in your life. You almost at the tipping point, hallelujah. The Lord said, if you praise me, I'll do it for you, hallelujah. If you praise me through the process, I'll grant your request. If you praise me, I'll work it out for you. If you praise me, I'll bless your whole family. If you praise me, I'll open up a door that no man can shut. I'll heal your body. I'll set you free. All you got to do is raise me and trust me in the process. It's crazy how God used muddy waters to heal somebody. God used the most nastiest bacteria algae infested waters to heal somebody and the by the lord spoke to me last night because i said there's something more there god the lord said when i washed naaman i wanted him to leave that old dirty stuff in that murky muddy water hallelujah i wanted him to have the newness of life i wanted him to be healed don't let the enemy keep you in that process don't let yourself keep you in that process because you are almost at the end of that process. All you got to do is trust and believe. But Lord, I'm struggling with this disease. My body hurts all the time. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm struggling with doubt in my mind. My spirit is about to be vexed. Just trust me. Hallelujah. That's all he said. Trust me. I'll do it for you. Trust me, I'll set you free. 
He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I heal your mind. I heal your broken heart. I heal your spirit. I can do anything but fail. There is nothing that I can't do. Man tries to put the limits on God. He shatters the limits and said, I am the Lord. I am, hallelujah, I do the impossible. No doctor can do what God can. No man can do what God can. I heal all manner of disease. Naaman almost missed his blessing. But I thank God a little girl and some soldiers had enough faith to say, Naaman, go get in the dirty water. Go get your healing. Naaman took it the wrong way. He said, I'm going to pay for my healing. I'm going to give this prophet all or whomever. I'm going to give them what they want. You can't come to God like that. You got to come to God with faith and believe that in faith he will do what he is going to do for me. But Lord, my wife, my husband, they ain't saved yet. Have faith. Hallelujah. Trust the process. You'll see the work that God does in their life. You'll see God moving it and shaping it and putting things into place. That's what he does. He does it sometimes instantaneously. And then other times he waits. But in the process of waiting, I'm still praising. I'm still worshiping. I'm still walking right before God. I'm still fasting. I'm still helping people. I'm still doing what God wants me to do. Because I trust the process. You look at it. Naaman gets healed. He's healed. He still don't recognize. He said, Elijah, let me give you something. Elijah said, I don't want nothing. I don't want anything. He said, I got to give you something. He said, no, I don't want anything. So he rides off. Now, that's my pastor. That's my bishop. Regardless of he being my father. I'm going to follow him as he follows Christ, right? But I ain't going to do nothing that's going to get on the prophet's bad side. So Elisha's serving. He says, wait a minute, I'm going to get something out of this deal. He chases after Naaman. He says, give me 75 pieces of silver. Give me some clothes. I'm going to say it's in the name of Elisha. So he goes back and he hides it from Elisha. And the Bible says that when he goes back and sees Elisha, Elisha tells him, why did you take that silver from Naaman? The same leprosy that he had, you're going to have it now. And the Bible says he was cursed with leprosy. You better follow the instructions. <laughs> we got to follow the instructions. This is the thing where the process sometimes is not easy. It's, it doesn't make sense. Because Naaman is just like, listen, I could go to Damascus where it is, there is the Abana, the uh, Farpar rivers, which the Abana means golden stream, which is plentiful. Won't you want me to go through the plentiful side, Lord, and be healed? No, I want you to go through the dirty water because I got a blessing in that dirty water for you. Don't look at a situation and say to yourself, that ain't a, that ain't a good situation. God will put you in an obscure situation sometimes because he wants you to go through it. Hallelujah. And you got to get to a place where you're like the woman with the issue of blood. I'm a crawl. I'm a bite. I'm a do anything I need to do to get my blessing. And when you do those things, you show honor to God. And that's when he starts to bless you. He starts to heal your body. He starts to fix the things that you in your life that are wrong. But be transparent. Be vulnerable to change. And God will help you change. Everybody please stand at this time. I said, Lord, I don't want to preach this message. Let me get something that make people shout and dance. Nah. The Bible says, cry loud, spirit, and I lift up my voice like a trumpet of Zion. Show thy people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. You got to preach what God wants you to preach. You got to say what he wants you to say. And there are people in this house that are struggling with trust in the process. But Lord, I've been trusting him for 20 years and it still ain't happened. Keep trusting him. But change your approach in the process. 
Because if you are there too long, do a self-diagnostic of yourself. Saying, what is hindering me from not finishing this process? Change me, God. Change me to a way that you want me to be so I can serve you better. There's nothing wrong with that. Saying, God, change me to be better. I don't like the way I am. I'm mean. I'm angry. I'm, I'm irritable. I don't like who I am. I want to be free to worship you. I want to be happy, Jesus. I want to do all things, Jesus. I don't need to be the same way I be. Somebody say something to me. I want to flip off and say something else. No, that ain't God. We got to do what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. We got to say what he wants us to say. Yeah, I know they get under your skin, Lord, but just walk away. Turn the other sheet. <laughs> say, Lord, help me to be better. Help me, Jesus. I want to do your will. I don't want to do my own will. I surrender myself to you, Jesus. Song William McDowell wrote a couple years ago. He says, I give myself away so you can use me. I surrender everything to you. And I love the song as growing up. I surrender all. I surrender everything, God. Nothing shall hold me back from the will of God. But there's somebody here that needs.